Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Onward VR Master League. My name is Nightfire with two E's. I am here with my co-caster, Buxton. How are you today, sir? I'm doing good. The weather is uh, kind of warming up over here. Hopefully, it's kind of doing the same, but I think California, is it always warm over there? Uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty, it's actually pretty cold. Up. I mean, well, I guess I can't complain. Like, it's been 40 to 50 degrees around here lately, which is freezing for California. I've had to get a winter jacket. That's not what we're focused on right now, Bucks. We've got to be focused on what's ahead of us. Indeed, we have. We have a bit of an underdog uh, story here. Vikings versus boss fight. And I think this is sort of a, a product of the new thing we're doing this season where every team plays every team. Uh, I believe this has been a thing kind of in the previous seasons as well, but sometimes, okay. uh, you know, it has trouble. Like, the season length is kind of been in flux in the past well now it's kind of solidified we know how long the season was from the start we know when the events are right. and though there have been kind of disruption uh like the week before last with the uh, league taking a break due to the tech issues uh we just stayed on there the matches are still kind of going to the same generation and we should hopefully still be seeing that pattern of just every team is going to play every other team at least once hopefully yeah you never know because uh, there, there are a lot of teams in na a yeah, lot, uh, not as many teams in uh, EU, so maybe we'll see some repeats. Well, either way, it is uh, a bronze versus a master tier matchup. The only thing that we have that Vikings have going for them is that we haven't really had any uh, footage this season. They have lost one game to Big Red One, albeit it was very close, and then they've won two games, uh, seven to nine against Phantoms and twelve to three against Dead Logic, who's a new team to the EU this year. Indeed they are. I feel like Dead Logic is kind of a uh, get. They're getting long here. I feel like they could be a big one later on. Which I, I actually thinking about uh, Vikings here. I want to see Vikings and Dead Logic kind of go uh, toe to toe. I think that would be interesting. Well, they did. Uh, they did last week. Vikings won 12 to three. So that's why I'm kind of curious to see how this uh, match is going to shake up. Historically, boss fight have really taken it to Vikings, but. Maybe Vikings are feeling a little bit better this season, a little bit more uh, coordinated. I don't know. That's, that's, that's kind of like the dark horse story here that would, that could be uh, that could be shaping. Yeah, it could absolutely be the dark horse. I, I would be really surprised if Vikings can get a map off boss fight here. I think they could go call this mm. a day and be a very happy day. I, taking a map against boss fight would be very, very interesting. And uh, I think Vikings has picked up some new members recently, so potentially... They could kind of bring in some new tactics, some uh, fresh blood. I know one of the players is unfortunately kind of missing out here, but they still have a, a full roster. So hopefully they're feeling good still. Hopefully. That's what I'm hoping, because I want to see them try and take this as far as they can, despite the clear 
skill gap because boss fight is just such a dominating team especially on the smaller maps yeah looks like the lobby is up so we should dive into pick bands here um if you don't mind bucks why don't we go over what the bands were from each squad i think we had a map pick as well or a side pick as well so there's been some interesting choices mm. today what, what, what we got all right, so from Vikings, we have a subway ban. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that's entirely unexpected against Boss Fight. They do kind of like to play their unusual maps recently. They've been playing night maps like Suburbia 2. Uh, I think they might have played Bizarre 2 as well at some point, which is bizarre to say the least. And uh, from Boss Fight, we have a ban of Quarantine 1, which is uh, kind of an interesting ban. That's not a map I think Boss Fight would normally uh, ban against any team, really. I think they're pretty confident on it, though. Maybe it's not their best map. They're certainly not particularly bad on it either. And then for our map pick, I think it was boss fight that chose side. Or was it, it was, Vikings? in fact, Vikings, okay. yes. The Vikings have chose side, and their map choice from boss fight then is Suburbia 2. Indeed it is. What's up with that? Why is that a why is that a resurgence in the what, what is what is this map? Why does it keep showing up in the league? I think it's because Suburbia 2 opens up new defensive and offensive strategies. Just to, uh, the color differences, you can move up to places without uh, more smokes. You can uh, take different defensive uh, d uh, defensive spots that that kind of get occluded by the shadows. You can. <sighs> Uh, one big thing, actually, thinking about it now, you can use the shield with the laser and the night vision, which you can't do on the day maps anymore. It just gets totally overexposed. Uh, so I guess because they're bringing in Weather Bloom for this, then uh, that's going to be a big thing for them, that shield play. You know, uh, looking at the rosters, these guys, they have... I mean, Vikings should be ready for this, right? They should know that Weather Balloon is a key shield player on uh, boss fight side that it's very likely that shield use is going to come in here and they're going to have to have some C4 placed or some good nades to catch it out uh, because I feel like that's the best way to deal with it. And just looking at the rosters right now, uh, the active ones at least, over on boss fight we have Weather Balloon, Hoochie UK, UC Death, Mad Scientist, and Scooby-Doo. And over on Vikings, we have 35, Mantis, Spoilty, Brorzy, and we're not sure who that <coughs> fifth is yet. Yeah, we do have the one member in Chara, uh, Nolik. He was unfortunately, I think, planned to come in, but uh, internet issues. And I'm kind of feeling that we may see, just a guess off the top of my head here, either Nak Tom or we'll see... Uh, Gecko. I yeah. think either Gecko or Nactom, yeah. I think we're going to be seeing one of them. And uh, Nactom, he came from Ronin, I believe, the uh, NA team. So that's kind of an interesting transition going from one division to another. And uh, maybe the time zones aren't going to be too kind, so he won't be able to hop in here. But maybe he will. You never know. Some teams, uh, some players, they have weird sleep schedules, myself included. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe we have to do some detective work and see if Vikings are reaching out for a sub because... If they're uh, if they're short one, that could be bad news. Subs, uh, we reserve us a very strong pool these days, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I, not a terrible thing to be pulling from, but usually you want to dive into your your roster, someone that you've been practicing with, you've had experience with, and it is going to be actually neither of ours <laughs> of our guesses. They're going to bring in Fumi or Femi, I guess. Very well then. Yes, Fumi Fungi. It's a kind of a confusing name. I have a feeling <laughs> that we're going to flub that several times. I think the full name is uh, Famiculus Fungi, which uh, is slightly easier to say, I think, just because, uh, you know, less alliteration. I might just go with Fungi. I feel like that's probably the easiest route, but we'll see if I can manage that. <laughs> the V, maybe let's call everybody V for Vikings, because that's what they're going with with their, uh, with their names. The today. V Squad. Yeah. Uh, almost deceptively similar to uh, the Legionnaires, kind of. What do you call that? What was the a team tag? I guess. Oh, it was a. P it was like a team a, tag. It was a P or something. It was something very uh, that off-putting, and it was making names very hard to read. <laughs> well, at least they're not kind of uh, confusing us with that here, then. Yeah. And if everything is right with our. Uh... 
what we're seeing here on our screen, Bucks, we're going to be kicking things off with a center house objective on Suburbia 2. Yeah, and with boss fight on Marsoft, this is going to be a pretty big clash, I think. This is an objective that you do not really want to uh, take chances on if you're on Volk. Because if they rush through, and they rush through hard, which I imagine boss fight is going to try just because, you know, their boss fight and taking things by storm is always a good tactic. Just because the other side is so unprepared for that. So if they do that, they rush through, they get the cap. It's going to be a very rough start for Vikings, but not entirely unexpected considering boss fight is, as I said, boss fight. They are a boss fight to be uh, slightly more to be slightly more pronounced with that. They are the boss fight of EU minus beginners. I don't know. It's, I think Vikings, they got, I, it could be, I don't know. I'm curious to see how Vikings are going to shape up today because I think a lot of these mid-tier teams have ramped up their dedication and how much they're, uh, how hard they want to win. Our timer is now a little bit offset, so just be aware that uh, it actually will work out pretty well for us ultimately. But wow, <laughs> yeah, it's actually perfectly timed almost. It's going to be seconds. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a few seconds off. But we are diving into round one of map one in this boss fight versus Viking series. And there's that shield from Weather. Hmm. But I'm kind of surprised to see that they aren't going for a hard push straight through center. I'm not sure if they were kind of scared by a pre-nade, which uh, would not be entirely uncommon, or some pre-fire. But they're kind of skirting around the edges, getting some pre-fire way off to the sides of the map. And I imagine Hoochie's going to be trying to kind of, uh, you know, cross across that street, look into the center house. I believe that is a tactic they do like to use from time to time. Get him across the street, fire it through those windows, and send weather up in kind of a two-stage attack. I like their defense. It is very uh, back. They don't have anybody up, advanced forward that could be uh, vulnerable to a pick. Krorzy is definitely susceptible to a nade at Carport. And Mantis does catch two with a nice nade over the bush. That fire from Scooby definitely uh, exposing those two there. And that should be a nice double res for weather, though. If they just had another nade for Mantis there, that could have been absolutely beautiful. Possibly a 4k with two confirmed if they got it just perfectly timed with some very nice insight. That would have been impressive to see, but those those, con those confirmations, nades, you need to do them. They are so important. If you can just get that second nade out when you're in exposed positions like that, it can really help you out at the start of the round. I'm interested in this move from Mantis. Really good play as he gets the nade out, but then... Over aggression, catching him out from UC Death. 3v5 catches Weather Balloon out with the nade. And Boss Fight are very fragile right now. They could easily, <laughs> you know, one nade could catch two, could catch three guys out and, and they would be insta dead. No res available. Yeah, this is pretty scary to see. I know if uh, my old co captain was here, he would be absolutely fuming right now seeing the spacing. But it appears they are kind of spreading out now, so it's getting significantly safer. Are indeed. Turn our light on here to brighten things up for you. 335 trying to land some shots on the weather balloon. And if they're just patient enough, Ferrozzi will have that angle onto the side of weather. Oh, 35, a nice kill on a Scooby and a fantastic airburst on a 35. Does down him, not insta. Very lucky. Mm, that looked like it, it was almost, right on his head. Yeah, <laughs> it did. He's very lucky, but Crozy on that black eye. I'm surprised he hasn't gone for a flank. Really, I suppose he's just waiting for Weather Balloon to move up here. Where's the toss of flash on the weather? I think that was successful. Weather's dropping back. Yeah, but there's no follow up. That's a big mistake with that flash. That only gave away his position, but that could have been a really strong move. That could have been a power play. I don't know if Weather knew where that flash came from, honestly. Maybe not. Maybe oh. he thought it was coming from Porsche instead of Black Car. Yeah, Karorzi could have a nice back end of weather here if he peeks it. He does catch Hoochie, who thinks he's safe after seeing weather advance forward, but he's not. And now weather is aware of this carport position. Mm. He seems really hesitant to actually push up here. Maybe he's waiting for Mad Scientist. It appears so. Oof. There it is. The shots from Mad Scientist do take Karorzi out in the carport. They still have the callouts from 35 back here, so if Weather decides to advance around the front side, that is going to be known, but it's down to a 2v3. So far, Vikings doing pretty well to defend against Boss Fight, though. 
yeah, this is going relatively smoothly, and uh, maybe just boss fight aren't quite warmed up yet either. It kind of feels like this is uh, not really how they usually play. They're uh, more aggressive than this normally. It feels like they're very apprehensive to do any real pushes. They're kind of hanging back there, coordinate with each other, but it's just a little bit slow compared to their usual pace. Oh, um, <laughs> they flash each other and they drop a smoke. Okay. Not a good start for this. What push. has just happened here in the corner? I do not know. <laughs> it appears there was some uh, hand confusion, a few butterfingers. Smoke grenades. It seems to work out though. A minute fifty left, so decent timing. Spoilty here, very susceptible to a pick, but he gets UC death, and that is huge. Turning it into a two v two, it's going to be a lot harder for Weather to advance up here, but he is going to sort of charge into this bottom floor. This is a pretty good angle for Fungi to hold here. Weather Balloon isn't really going to be able to get a lucky nade up because he can't really pocket into the corner or anywhere like that. So he's pretty safe as long as he stays tucked in, doesn't peek the stairs. And Spoilty, he's the second line of the defense here. If second uh, Fungi goes down, Spoilty can rush out, take down Weather. Hope going to make that pretty difficult, but Mad Scientist is coming to back up here, and this is going to make it quite a lot harder for the defense here. The two-man rush is very strong. I'm very surprised Spoilty is still holding that angle and hasn't shifted around to cover these stairs. Weather Balloon's there with the shield up. And that's a huge, huge trade. Mad Scientist doesn't opt for the shield and tucks himself into the corner. Spoilty now peeking. Vikings take the first defensive round. Wow, well that was not what I expected. And Sporty was overjoyed there. You could hear yeah. him just scream. Yes, he was happy with that. And man, that was a very tight trade. Very tight. How do you, that is such a set to... He, he almost pre-fired that corner. And that's such a good... Quick... That's such a good judgment play there because... That corner is, I mean, there's all sorts of different possibilities he could have been in. He could have pushed up against the wall, he could have been advancing forward on him, but he just immediately goes around, is trained right there and catches that shot out. And Vikings get the early lead. Yeah, if they can keep this up, this is going to be a very interesting series indeed. Maybe we can expect some... Uh... My predictions to rain. Sure, I gotta say, Scooby was kind of scared beforehand. He uh, he told me that every time I've cast them, they have uh, not won. <laughs> so I think they may be a little bit spooked by me casting this and them uh, losing this first round. Possibly the uh, voodoo magic is coming to the play here and helping out Vikings. Another thing to note is that later this week, or I guess tomorrow, um, Boss Fight will be facing off in their Button Cup match against Danglers. And you and me will be attending that one as well, so... I'm sure the Danglers are, are tuned in on this and uh, watching this series. And I don't know, I'd be certainly surprised if they if Danglers... This is Boss Fight's map pick. But I'd be surprised if Danglers picked a night map like this, but... Depending on how this map, how this series shakes up, we'll see. And we are going to dive into round number two. The timer is a bit off, but oh, uh, also colors are wrong. And it seems like we're doing a little bit of a reset here. Yeah, it appears there was some issue loading in, which probably would make sense. Because uh, obviously the team colors, it feels like that's kind of a linked thing. So it's a good indication, I guess, uh, for our caster side that something's gone wrong for the players. Kind of helpful, I think, at this point. Scores are still accurate, at least. But that timer is definitely not going to be, so we'll just have to keep that in mind when we hop into the second round. Hopefully, we can get this stuff fixed soon. Dante, Mr. Death. Yeah, hopefully uh, that will get hot fixed out soon. I wonder when it's coming. That would be nice. Because, you know, you, I imagine they're going to try and squash them all at once. Sooner the better. <laughs> Indeed. But it appears they're just uh, kind of some more waiting for the teams here. Maybe there we are. Getting guy reconnected. 
Maybe not. Maybe they're starting. They are starting, yes. There we go. Ah, uh, yes, they are. There's no <laughs> no countdown timer for us. And yeah, it is going to kick off the round with the timer being inaccurate and colors being inaccurate. Actually, the colors, yeah, they are wrong. <laughs> yeah. I guess for the score, they're right. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, I guess it is technically correct in that kind of sense, but team colors, uh, Marsock is now red. That is the uh, de facto yes. situation. Yes, correct. That's what's happened. And a good defensive smoke here. Krorzy catching out an early push from Mad Scientist and instantly refragged by Weather Balloon. So a little trade one for one there, but Weather will be able to pick up Mad Scientist. So actually a solid pickup and a good way for Boss Fight to kick off the round. We may see a good nade from Mad Scientist there. Uh, it just went past Funk, but somehow it went through his shield and damaged him just a little bit. Not really sure how. But he's gonna have to heal off that wasted syringe. Did he have to use a syringe? I heard the kind of scream. I know, I did too, but I don't think he used yeah. a syringe. Maybe it was just a uh, a phantom sound. Yeah. He was kind of just scared instead. It wasn't actually pain. <laughs> That nade startled his uh, in-game character. The Vikings are definitely taking this slow, I think. And guys slowly advancing the east, they're just checking over. Feels like it's kind of the same strategy as boss fight. Just a little bit less aggressive on the left-hand side. Because they did, of course, lose that member. Couple of nades, man, it's rotating around probably back up Jimmy with that shield who's trying to deal with that scientist and I wonder if I any blocked that, that. Got yeah I don't think it did either and it did wow. not and there's that uh, laser sight pistol coming out for you right there with the night vision and oh I'll... my wow not a good one for a boss fight here not oh, a good round it's, no. it's not feeling good <laughs> oh dear what happened up there? I didn't even see it. They must have tried to throw a nade out the window. I guess so. And they, I think they only tried for another one. They did get it out this time, at the very <laughs> least. That could have gone very bad. Yikes. And this is now a 4v3 for Vikings. They're looking to get a 2-0 lead on Boss Fight's map choice. They just have to play it out right and take advantage of these mistakes. That was a well-timed nade from Vikings there, though. Didn't quite uh, kind of get positioned correctly in Fungi. I think he's going to take that Weather Balloon here. Weather Balloon's just watching a totally kind of different angle. I suppose he's putting a lot of trust in UC Death. I mean, they don't have anybody covering Burning Building. That's what he's concerned about. He's concerned about that long rotation around the backside. Because if, if somebody does get out, get around to their spawn building, that is definitely troublesome. You can get up in that two-story, work some covering fire into that center uh, center objective building. Mother Balloon now moving, catches out Femi perfectly. And that's a huge pick because that's their shield user. He's going to try and rotate around quick and catch Mantis on the backside. Mantis has to be ready for this, and he's not. A huge double kill for Weather and a nice refrag from Spoilty, evening things out into a 2v2. He's a very nice round so far for Vikings. Boss fight definitely feeling the voodoo magic here. This is not going particularly well for them. If we see a 2-0 lead for Vikings on the first map, that's going to be big. This We could have actually the first map. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Again, by UC Death, my former teammate now sabotaging boss fight. Wow, that is worst case scenario. I mean, he, he was feeling the same sort of pressure that they were feeling last round up. Yeah, Vikings were feeling last round up here. So he rounds the corner pre-firing, but it turns out it's his friend. This is a disaster. This is a disaster for boss fight. And UC Death's in such a precarious situation. If 35 has a nade, I think it's game over. Wow, a great shot from on the spoilty. Now he rotates around a wise decision. You can't stay in that corner. And the timer is wrong, so there's probably only about a minute or two left on the clock. 
I believe there is about two minutes remaining, judging by where about, uh, I think three minutes when the round initially started. Is so far going to get this revive? No way this can be allowed to happen. Wow, he is. That's a huge res. And that was insanely quick. He went straight to chest <laughs> to get that yeah. res up in a heartbeat. Very nicely done. And I like UC Death's new position. I think it's smart. Because they're definitely banking on, on him being into that corner. Oh, I just realized why Vikings were so scared. The wall, there's a C4 on the wall, and it was totally just sitting there. They could have been blown up and killed at any moment. Wow. Oh, that, 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 that was that, scary. I wonder where that detonator is. Maybe it was on Hoochie's corpse, potentially. I'm not, not seeing it there, so maybe Scooby-Doo. Not a lot of time to investigate as these guys are going to be pushing in on this objective any second. Spoilty charges up, goes straight into the corner, and that rotation out of UC Death does catch him out. 35 comes up and gets him in the backside, and Vikings take the lead 2-0. This is definitely not what I expected the how to this match to go. Wow, my words, they are not coming out right, but that's okay. A 2-0 lead from Vikings on the first map, on the send house objective. This is unprecedented. It is a good start for Vikings, but Boss Fight are not a team that you can count out. They are a master tier team. Uh, they've competed in live tournaments. I definitely expect them to put up a strong fight here. So if Vikings start to get overconfident and play over aggressive in this next round, it's definitely uh, could bite them very hard because it can be a boss fight cap. Yeah, it definitely could. As long as I just keep the keep their stuff focused. Yeah. Don't let boss fight kind of take back the pace with a round win. They can definitely take this all the way so far. Absolutely they can, because uh yeah, they are on folks so the team colors are correct now. Just had to double check that in my mind. Yeah. But what objective do you think we're seeing next? Because of course the current objective is uh, in fact incorrect, so right. maybe burning house? I would like to see a burning house to kind of keep this high speed, high octane play coming. Absolutely. I think it would be interesting to see a northwest corner objective by the white car. I'd like to see what sort of fast, you know, there's, there's that potential for the fast smoke here. Mm. And, I, and I don't see the objective on my screen, so we'll have to just kind of suss this out and I try and... I think it is northwest. I think it is too. If we see a kind of a Mantis or Sporty go to the objective, I think that is going to be the case, and we can kind of uh, think over how Boss Fight is going to try for this. Colors are in order, so Volk is the back of the normal color. Man, it's running into some weird running issue there in the middle. Lost his, lost his thumb pad there, and yeah, this is definitely a this is definitely up here in this corner. Uh, so. <laughs> For those watching, timer is incorrect. Colors are correct. Oh, and this night could be big from Mantis. Oh, it's going to be an insta-kill. It is an insta-kill. But the trade there. So Mantis does go down from Weather Balloon's nade up and over. But Weather's wasn't an insta. Weather's going to push up. And Spoilt, he's trying to rotate around here to confirm, to catch Weather Balloon out. There's the knife. Perfect the nade. Nade comes out. A bit too far from Spoilt. Balti's exposing himself quite a lot here. This is a dangerous position. I think Weather Balloon does know he's right around this corner. And he's got the AR ready, that AK-12. I don't know if Weather's shield is covering him like he's hoping it is either. It might be. Now it is. Here's some shots on the other side. Scooby-Doo kind of throwing out some distractive shots. As Weather advances up, 35 catches out Hoochiku in the middle. Weather Balloon's still rotating around. Boss fight are into a... They're losing members left and right. 35 doing work in the center. And it causes Weather Balloon to second guess. Yeah, Weather Balloon's going to have to fall back here. There's no way he can keep advan advancing up here despite his good position. Oh. He's getting forced back by those picks in the center. It was such a good move from Weather, too, because right as he dropped back, 35 peaked to that corner and would have had a nice angle onto the side of Weather. So he does stay alive, but it's a 4v2 right now for Boss Fight. not how they wanted to start their map pick. 
What's Mad Scientist not. up to? Where is Mad Scientist? Way in the far south. What is he up to? That is a very good question. Is he looking for a flanker? Do they have the time to look for a flanker? Because I believe we've already gone down to maybe three minutes, four minutes-ish. Is he connected? <laughs> yeah, he's there. <laughs> yeah, he's looking. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they got about three minutes on the clock. We started at about 2.20. I don't know. I'm what... definitely not sure what the plan is with him, yeah. Yeah, because you look at the current defensive layout, it's a nice U shape around their objective. It's going to be really hard to come up the middle or anywhere on objective side. Their best bet is definitely what Weather's doing here to drop around to this side, but those angles are also covered. They have Karorzi here, and Weather Balloon's just running. Do they not have Karorzi here? He's oh fearless. my gosh. One guy's seen him though, he's called him out, they know he's behind. Karozi's gonna be looking for him. But he's here. And Karozi still hasn't rotated around. Finally, he turns his back. Will Weather Balloon expect him to be here after he just totally walked past the street? I suppose this is the advantage of night maps for Marsoc. Femi is in a pretty dangerous position here because Weather could peek up and ID Femi there on the porch, take him out. Or Karozi can do anything. looking right at him. He has to see him with the night vision. How does he not see Femi there? I don't know, but Kroos is coming around from behind and he's going to see Weatherboon in any second. There we go. Cool down, cool down. That's a nice he's... pick. <laughs> Weather with the bound the back end going down with the shield. And Mad Scientist is still in the far south. I'm confused, Nightfire. I yeah. don't know what's going on. Yeah, he's checked the pad, and uh, he knows he's just the only one here. Hold on, he's a still second. here. Do I do I know what's going? Yeah, I know what's going on. He was trapped in spawn with a bug. He didn't realize until uh, I guess after the round reset, kind of time had passed. Interesting. That's very unfortunate. Oh, that's why. Oh, that makes sense. So they had started the round. What, but what is he doing? So he was sitting there? He was trapped in spawn, But yeah. wouldn't you, I, you... You can still identify that early and tell yeah, your team I to guess reset. They, they just, maybe he was away for the first, like, 20 seconds of the round That's or something. That's what I'm saying. What happened there? There's, you know, there, it's, it's unfortunate, but there's still got to be at fault. You know, like, how does that happen? That's so strange. Yeah, that is... Uh, maybe, maybe it was some kind of uh, thought on the side of Boss White Piers. They may be rehosting this lobby. But that's not the interesting. He must have been awake for a second or something. Uh, that would, that makes the most sense. No worries. We can do a quick reset here. Should be back into the action shortly. And maybe we'll have correct round timers too, which would be a treat, huh? Indeed it would be. That would be very nice to have. <laughs> We are going to get a different objective though, it's not going to be the north one, it may be the northwest, but I don't think it will be, no it's not. But this one is better for Vikings, I think. Hmm. I wonder if a uh, boss fight will be accepting of that. Possibly. Yeah, this is the tank objective instead of that northwest objective, and uh, if Vikings can play their cards right, dare I say we may see a 5 0? Dare I say that? Mm. I feel like that's me being very presumptuous. I, You know, I don't know how that round would have shaken out if they did have their fifth member, but they lost two guys early on their push. And I. I yeah. They just have to play they have to play tight here. You know, they just can't afford to go with anything over aggressive. Uh let themselves get caught out by by Vikings, because their Vikings are looking good right now, man. They're playing well. They're focused, they're 
you know, they they're riding the momentum, so they're feeling good. You know, there's no, there's not a lot of, they're not feeling that pressure, and I don't know, that's a dangerous thing to go up against. Yeah, it definitely is, because the mental component, as I've said, I think many times now, many, many times throughout the uh, casting history, is that the mental component of Onward is a big thing, as well as just a kind of in uh, competitive things in general. If you don't give up, then there's uh, always a chance of being able to get a comeback, as we've seen uh, 3-0s go to 3-3s many a time in the past. We aren't seeing any roster changes either, so what you've been seeing in this first uh, first map is going to be staying the same. But man, th I, I mean, this is... This was sort of a thought in the back of my mind as I was looking. You know, I thought, oh boy, bronze versus master matchup, Vikings versus boss fight. Let's t take a look at the match history. Yikes, boss fight historically taken a lot of rounds from them. And then, you know, looking at Vikings play this season, it's definitely it definitely was looking a little bit better. You know, they had some dominating wins. And I think if a team has dominating wins in a league, it's a sign that they're, you know, making progress. Even if it's, if it's against a new team, I think that's just an indication that they can do that. If you're able to, to take new teams and really run them through the ringer and, and you know, win 12-3, then mm. you're obviously a squad that's at a level where you're playing coordinated. And so, yeah. I, I don't know, you know, maybe if they, can, if they can keep this up, we'll see. But I, this is, it's so strange because this is Boss Fight's map pick. The Vikings did pick side, but Boss Fight chose, picked into Suburbia too. And I don't know if our timers are right, but it's pretty dang close as we dive into round number four of this first map. Hopefully no technical issues during this one. Hopefully all members of Boss Fight can get out of their spawn as the timer goes down. <laughs> it depends it's within a few seconds and everyone's out. We're safe. So the clock is pretty close to being accurate, but I don't think it's spot on. Look at this position from Weather Balloon. A bit aggressive there. He is exposed, but he's looking for that angle on the Mantis. He loves that angle. Hoochie as well, I know, uh, also takes kind of a longer range one that allows him to uh, pre-fire from Sickness Spot all the way towards that center passageway where Weather Balloon is looking over where Mantis is. Can be a very strong position if you just get that timing just perfect. But Carport is so dangerous to be at. I'm surprised that people have been picking up and defending there because a good nade or a shot like that from Manus will catch you out. And just like that, boss fighter into a 4v5. Definitely not a good start again, but that nade is possibly in the... No. That could have evened things up, but yep. Mantis, I think, is a kind of a living by pure luck there that was just a little bit too hard of a throw you sprayed that nade repellent on earlier today <laughs> just slipped straight off his head another frag getting tossed out from vikings crozy making his way up over on the west side and everyone's sort of just slow playing their way as they inch forward checking through shrubs seeing if they can get any picks out they already have the 4v5 so i feel like right now should be trying to coordinate and figure out what their next move is instead of looking for another pick. Hmm. I think they're maybe going to try and deal uh, with uh, Hoochie first. They know that most of boss fight is going to be either at the uh, Scent House and um, probably a guy, well, they know there's a guy at Burnix. He just popped off those shots. So they want to deal with, I think, Mad Scientist first before they try and do anything else. Hoochie maybe the second, and then they're ready to go for the objective and send a house. But Hoochie may be a bit of a difficult one to take down since he is just behind all of that cover. Ooh, Mad Scientist botching that flash a little bit, but a nice one as he rotates around the backside. Looks for the picks, but everybody is still pretty tucked into their defensive positions in 35. Catches out Scientist getting a little over-aggressive. Boss fight into a 3v5. Now this is definitely what Vikings wanted for this round. They've got to be feeling absolutely on their ball of their game right now. I'm not sure what I tried to say there. They're at the top of their game. And some smokes on objective, I think, from Kurozi. Or was that nade? Oh, nade. It was a nade. Yeah, fragging the Trying other side. Trying to get someone behind the tank. Yep. 
Ooh, Uchi. I should have been very solid. Oh, Uchi had managed to toss that just a bit further. He had uh, lifted weights in the gym a little bit more. Oh, Scooby's getting pretty aggressive in that center house. He just ducks way out into the middle of the stairs just to take a little peek at Mantis below. That could have been really dangerous. That could have gone down to a 5-2 to two very quickly. The lines of sight on objective are still pretty good. You see Death's tucked into the corner really well. He can see objective pretty good. These smokes aren't going to completely deny him. Hoochie evening things up a touch as he catches out Crozy Mantis pushing in, though. Finds Scooby-Doo. And now Manus has control of bottom floor center building. You see Death has to worry about all sorts of different angles now and can't completely focus on objective as Hoochie gets over aggressive. He goes down. And now Manus is pushing up. You see Death catches him out. And I think if you see Death holds here, it's definitely his best bet at defending the objective. He has to watch the cross, and he does get Femi a huge pick, and we're into a 1v2. Vikings are getting far too aggressive here. Sporty needs to go and get that revive, and 35. I think maybe Sporty can distract for uh, 35 here and allow him to get to the objective. I think they're aiming for a 5 0 here. I think they are. This is such a risky play, and why you see Death hasn't gone to the objective, I'm not sure. Ooh, but a good peek from Spoilty and catches you see Death tucked in the corner. And Vikings take a 4 0 lead in the series. This. Uh, uh. Vikings must have been practicing and stepping up their game for this. This is this is unbelievable. We've seen Boss Fight kind of have some major blunders with three team kills total, maybe four team kills total that map. And Vikings are just playing well. They're doing the right things. They they're getting the perfect shots they need. This could this series could go to Vikings. I think it really could now. I mean, there's just no excuse. You know, I, I understand that that last round, you know. It's definitely unfortunate to have your guys stuck at spawn, but those other three rounds, Vikings are playing fantastically and taking it to boss fight. Like, they, uh, that was... Yeah, they got over-aggressive, but dude, they were going for the 5-0 win against boss fight. They didn't want four. And they eventually opted in to take that final kill on UC Death and get the 4-0 win, but... Wow. What a great... What a great start of this series for Vikings. I totally agree with you. They could take this. We are going to be going into Bazaar for our second map, which I think is I think that's a real test of which team is going to be able to take, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. The series is shaping up to be something. Yeah. I don't think, I think people expected the underdog story to be real here, and it'll be a massive uphill battle for Vikings, but I'm starting to see boss fight as the underdog almost at this point. This is unbelievable. If Vikings can get a two points here on this map, regardless of if they win or lose it, if they get two or more points, I think they can take the whole map, uh, the whole series rather, and get the win. 2-1 or 3-1. Uh, 3-0 rather. And looking at rosters, I'm not seeing any roster swaps out of either one of these teams. Are you? No, they appear to be the exact same. There would have been a very quick swap if they had indeed uh, subbed someone out, brung in someone new. It wouldn't be entirely unsurprising for a boss fight maybe to just swap someone in. I see Legend in the chat, but I think he may be away. Not sure on that though, maybe. Maybe we'll see him coming later. Maybe he's just uh, relaxing for today, just watching the stream. Yep. Yeah, the subs definitely uh, tuning in and seeing how their squads are shaping up today in this matchup, and I'm sure they're either shocked or very happy. <laughs> because uh, Vikings looking good here. We're still waiting on the start of our second map, but boss fight. They have they're not on the board yet. They have to get they have to get themselves up. Yeah. You know this was. I guess. What, what do you think, boss fights? Viking boss fights map pick again, right? Uh, yes, yes it is. So then Vikings get Volk again, and that's definitely clearly their strategy. They want that Volk side. I wouldn't be surprised if Vikings pick Volk again. Can you do that? Can you pick Volk twice? Uh, I believe you can. Yes. I wouldn't be surprised if Vikings picked Volk for their third map. 
Yeah, I think I think they will. I think they will, depending on what the yeah, third match correct. will be. Yeah, uh, it depends on how this shakes out as well. You know, if the series is on the line, if they want to take into something yeah. they're comfortable with, et cetera, et cetera. But it definitely seems to be their strategy, and we are going to be diving into map number two on Bazaar. Praise be, everything is right in the spectating world. Timers are accurate. Sides are accurate. We are underway with map number two in round one. Happy times. Happy times indeed. And we're seeing the Weather Balloon Shield play come out yet again for this Western objective. I'm kind of feeling now is when Boss Fight are going to change up their strategy and go fast in to try and just stop Vikings at all costs. They want to disrupt them first before they even think about winning, I'd say. They still have night vision on. At least it's on their kit. They do indeed, yeah. At least on Hoochie and Weather Balloon, but Weather Balloon makes sense at least. Maybe they just don't use it. They just don't change the... He's, he just doesn't change his shield kit. Yeah. That would make sense. It's pretty common. He isn't using the uh, the night vision on actively. So it's just on top of his head. Using the laser sight normally. I'm liking the defense from my Vikings here though. They've got... I'd say kind of an interesting position of spoilty on the stairs here, just by the western courtyard. I don't feel like people take that, but particularly uh, often, normally, you'd sit, you know, uh, inside on the first floor, just watching through the window, or you'd sit kind of uh, in the room next to that, just slightly deeper inside the building. But rarely you'd see people on the stairs and looking through the kind of window in the doorway here, where Weatherbloom is trying to come through. Jimmy's spot, too, is interesting. Tucked behind the wall here, has a decent line of sight through this little gap on an exit point in that middle south side. And that's kind of where his eyes are trained. But he's also watching that corner and obviously on top of objective. Interesting choice there. Susceptible to all sorts of nades. Krorzy not taking that typical tucked in defensive position and opting for something a bit more dicey. Put himself into this wood section here. He is peeking through the slices in the wood trying to spot enemies and then he'll take those shots, but he's just as vulnerable. Weatherloon and Sporty are kind of escalating with their standoff now. I think they're both just barely missing be able to see each other's uh, like tips of their guns and their shields. And But uh, I think Weatherloon's kind of got the short end of the stick here. Unless he's uh, you know, very quick on the draw and accurate with his pistol, coming around this corner, it's going to be bad news. Doesn't land a shot. He catches out the kneecap of Weatherloon as he started to react. He stood up just a, just a little bit and spoiled the... I mean, Vikings, they're looking so good. They're taking advantage of these tiny mistakes, even during the combat there. And they take that 5-4 lead. Yeah, this is very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Even on uh, Bazaar now, they're performing just as well as they did on the first map, Suburbia 2. And with another member getting picked off by uh, Mantis there, Hushi might just walk into the same death trap. We could see it go 2-5 to five yet again. And maybe we, Vikings are just going to pick up more points and take the series right here right now absolutely it is on the line here they've won that first map four nil they can keep it rolling they'll take the series on bazaar won't even matter what that third map is hoochie is aware of mantis location at the very least he's looking over there but is he going to try and kind of you know expect sporty rotating into this uh just corner where weather bloom went down i'm not sure he will and Mantis and Sporty both have C4 on their chests, ready to throw if they need to like disc it somewhere, but I don't really see them using it quite yet anyway. Hushi's gonna try and toss, this is interesting. A nade up and over off the wall, back around and catches out Manis. What a fantastic toss. Shocked that that wasn't an insta-kill though, but I think Hushi's gonna try and go up the stairs and confirm the kill from up there. Actually through the That crack. was a very good play. Really good play. Really good play all around there. The nade great and the confirm there to, just to be secure on the through that crack there. Very well done. Absolutely. Potentially Hoochie's going to be the one to redeem boss fight on this round. And we have Scooby and uh, what kind of mad scientist slowly pushing up the west Thank side, you. but I'm not sure what mad scientist's plan was there. He kind of just stood out in the street. Scooby wanted that nade to go over to Krorzy, but he doesn't. He gets the smoke, and now he starts to drop all the way back and rotate around. 
Spoilty catches out Hoochie inside the mini courtyard. And just like that, we're into a 1v4. I don't know if you heard Scooby vocalize that there. <laughs> I just saw the very uh, end of that, I think. Not the start for the map we were hoping for. This is some shots there as well inside Killbox, and he still can see that backside. He's turning the gun there so he can get the barrel clearance and misses even more shots there. Just can't find that guy there in that kill box. He really wants him though. He really is looking for this kill. There it is. Finally, the rotation. He catches him out. And now Spoilty was not ready for this super risky move from Karorzi as he moved himself out into that middle street. And Vikings take the lead 1-0. Nightfire. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I've lost the plot here. <laughs> Boss fight currently number three in the world. Getting beaten out pretty brutally by Vikings, which are currently ranked at, uh, let's see, number 18 in the world in the lowest division. Goodness. It's early in this the season, is... you know? It's, it's, yeah. it's not terribly early, but it is early. Because stuff like this, you know, I... Shocking, but almost not expected, but hoped for, I guess, really. You know, we wanted these middle tier teams to stop being middle tier, and that that's could that could be what we're seeing here. The, the low tier teams playing like gold tier and these mid tier teams playing like it's just I don't know what to expect. G Men putting up a good fight against Globo Chem last night. I mean Times are changing, that's yeah. for sure. Times are changing and they're changing to something very interesting. I think next season is going to be a clash of titans where everyone's a titan, I think. Mm. There's going to be so much going on. Probably some uh, like changes to things like running, maybe. Maybe we'll see like, some meta changes, some different plays coming out, maybe. That'll be very interesting because uh, I imagine by next season we'd have stuff like the M203 in. Stuff like that, the new explosives, the RPG. Those could change the game pretty big oh, on yeah. the smaller map, so... We could definitely see some more meta, uh, more off-meta plays. And we are underway with our second round and the second map. Vikings not letting Boss Fight get on the board yet. Boss Fight really need to take this, this uh, bulk round. Indeed. And Vikings are still very happy as well. Not quite out of spawn here, though. They're kind of just hanging about trading mags at the start. Hopefully that doesn't uh, kind of uh, messing up their timing. This is a real test for boss fight right now. You know, if they can refocus, get this round, start their comeback, it will be really important to them. I think if they lose this round and they let Vikings find an early pick here or have their way with this map, this round, it's just it's going to be Vikings map. Indeed, another 2-0 lead, and it would be grim, to say the least, for Boss Fight. I feel like just Boss Fight, they aren't hitting their shots. Vikings mm. are hitting theirs, and Boss Fight just are missing theirs, and in some cases, hitting their teammates instead. <laughs> yeah, you. I mean, you, you want to talk about that Suburbia round. That was an absolute round of chaos. I mean, they were... They picked into it, but I just don't think they were ready for the night map because they were certainly doing a lot of team killing there. Unorthodox for a team yeah. of their caliber. And, uh... Yeah, just not going there well. A little pre-fire there from Manus into the two-story. Just a, He wanted to maybe uh, try and bait out some member of boss fight if they were hiding up there, but there's no one there, and the rest of Vikings should be free to move up once they do realize this. But hopefully they uh, don't spend too long kind of hanging about in this northeast area. Because for this particular objective, teams can get pretty scared of this Kyle area, the two-story in the north, and kind of get trapped trying to clear it before they move up. And they can really burn a lot of time by doing that. Yeah, and you know, there is some dangerous angles here along this far north side of Krorzy. keeps just 
you know, rotating around out during that out in that far north street, he could get picked. Especially if he decides to go on the other side of the wall, it's going to be bad news for him. As long as he stays tucked in here into the Coyote area, and they try and move up through that mini courtyard there. They're definitely going to. That's definitely going to be their best approach. Yeah. Man, oh, the coordination from Vikings here. Looking at the map, the overhead map. This is so satisfying. They're moving at the exact same pace. Every single member. This is some very good coordination from Vikings here. Though I'm not sure if it's intentional or not. They are very coordinated and in sync. Right, not so in sync anymore. They're kind of broken up. Yeah, Corozzi seems a little bit on edge, and I'm concerned that he may find spoilty as an enemy if he keeps this up, or vice versa. <clears throat> it's all about map knowledge, though, and if these guys have checked the pad, and if they know where their teammates are. Yeah. Boss fire playing also pretty passive by uh, kind of this kind of stage in the game. Normally you'd like kind of uh, be peeking out, trying to look for someone moving up on their angles, but they are playing very defensive, not peeking any angles. They're just watching their lanes and they're sticking there. I don't think Weatherloon has moved more than maybe half a meter since the game started. Well, since the round started. Yeah, he's covering this. This angle is so hard to deal with because it's one that is waiting for you when you're out in the open. Once you've decided to commit and cross the street, you're completely exposed. Unless you have the proper smokes or the right distraction, it's very hard to cross this street. So Mantis is gonna need to deal with weather if they want to allow Femi to cross. Yeah. And the time is kind of slowly running down here. The time is correct and Fungi with that early pick, well, early pick, early for their push here on that mini market. This is gonna be, I think, the start of uh, Viking's push. They're running down the time. They have the utility and their positions ready. I mean, do you think this is maybe Vikings doing homework and having footage on boss fight and boss fight not having any information on Vikings? Because it just seems like they know where their defensive positions are. I think so. Or maybe Vikings just playing kind of predictably because these spots are all very common positions for uh, most league teams, really. They're kind of just not really being too creative with them. I feel like it's really hurting them. Weather Balloon gets aggressive, comes out on Spoilty, but doesn't get him. And Spoilty, with basically a free kill delivered to him, now Vikings into a 2v4, 2v3, just like that as two go down, a pickup coming in. Scratch that, makes it into a 3v2. All sorts of res is available on the field. Scooby can get picked up. A, a frag from Scientist confirms Femi, so no res available there. And wow, and a very Bit of a flash there. Boss fight salvaged the round. Hoochie finding Corozzi. 35 picking up Mad Scientist. The callout's desperate from Scooby Doo, but they aren't heated by UC Death. He goes down, and they're into a 1v1. 45 seconds on this the clock. This could be the clutch. Oh, no. The time, though. You're right. 35's got to really pick up the pace here, or it's got to be absolutely perfect with his shot onto Hoochie, but Hoochie doesn't seem aware that the last guy's in the south. He's looking towards the north side on the far northeast of the map. He spots him out, and the comeback could be mounted now as Boss Fight finally get themselves on the board. And despite that announcement being wrong, they do even things out 1-1. Definitely a lot of time burnt there by Vikings. Uh, you can tell they got scared in that North Kyle area. But man, that that could that round could have easily gone to Vikings either way though. Just slightly more time, maybe a few utilities. There was a really big lack of smoke during that round, I think, from Vikings. They didn't really put them out anywhere. They had one failed smoke, maybe one on objective, and that was it. We saw the nades on the far west mm. and nothing else which was kind of surprising to see. Yeah, and I think another thing is to note is that Boss Fight had, has, has had some roster changes, but they've been playing pretty good in the, you know, they went, they they nearly won against beginners in their matchup. They, they put up a fantastic fight against beginners. They've been doing mm. well this season, so it's not to say that they aren't the same, uh, you know, team really. They're definitely the, a strong team deserving of their rank. But Vikings are just... 
I'm playing better. Yeah. I guess maybe like uh, they woke up on the wrong side of bed. That's what it feels like. You They're know, just not playing their usual way. Vikings is good. They're feeling good. They're feeling happy. They're playing well. And I don't know. You keyed in on it early, Bucks, and it may be that boss fight just weren't loose. And after, you know, after a few rounds, the opportunity could be here for them to start feeling their shots and landing their shots and their coordination sinking back up. We'll see if they can do that as we dive into round three of map number two, boss fight. The series on the line here, really, if they can't win this map. Yeah, this is looking like a boss fight rush here. They're getting the smokes prepped on this west side. They're going to go straight across for this objective. And this is definitely a boss fight kind of play. And this is how they usually do their comebacks. Their smokes are pretty good. There's some gaps there that can be exploited. 35 catches out. Mad scientists. I'm not sure where. I'm more tuned into this push by Weather Balloon as he's already crossed the street. You see death as well. And Vikings defense has allowed for this. They must have known Boss Fight was going to try this. They must have known. This is definitely, the, I'd say, the perfect defense for a Boss Fight doing this kind of push against them. But they're going in hard here. Look at Krorzy. This position here, very interesting. He's sitting here on the stairs. I think Weather Balloon may have seen him. Yeah, now he knows he's there. Corzi does catch out UC Death, though. A fantastic shot into that window there. He tries to opt in for a nade. UC Death is going to get rezzed up. Corzi is... I think he saw that hit, UC Death peak up there. Wow, what an airburst nade from Weather. That was absolutely perfect. I'm surprised that wasn't actually a insta-kill, really. He must have trained for that. Was that what? a one-tap headshot? With the pistol to Mantis? I thought he was confirming a kill there, but yes, you're right. It was on to Mantis. Wow. Weather Balloon. He might be loosening up here. I think so. I think all the boss fight is at this point. Man, Spalty's going to be the big threat. He's being aggressive, pushing up with the building where Weather and UC are. If he can make use of his C4, then this could be big. Weather Balloon with another flick shot attempt there. On to Femi. It seems like he's hitting his shield, but that could just be a spectate thing. Spoilty right here, ready for Hoochie. He's not. Confirmed one, there's still Weather Balloon inside the two-story. That's information oh for weather. weather. Weather charging in, jumps down, the shield's out, floats, he crashes in, charges it. The pistol shots win! The rest of Vikings, they really need to try and stop this guy from being inside, but Scooby Doo downs himself somehow with oh the grenade. Oh my gosh, he threw that nade up and over, and Femi trades with UC Death, a nice, important trade, and it brings us into a 1v1 with Weather Balloon on objective. Pad out! This is the major comeback. 35! This, this is what Boss Fight needed. He's running. He's trying to deny it. He's not looking. He hasn't spotted Weather. The shield's there blocking shots. And Weather caps. He's definitely loosened up there. He's running forward with his hands up. I think that was a what thumbs up from him. the heck? That was the comeback that Boss Fight needed. The pace, I think, has well and truly been taken from Vikings there. Absolutely. What an unreal round for Weather Balloon right there. A excellent airburst, a headshot. He crashes downstairs, gets the third kill on Spoilty. And then, did he get a fourth kill through the window? No, he, that was a trade. That yeah. was a trade for the fourth kill between Femi, and then he just charges forward. The shield play to have it propped up against his body, denying those shots from landing on him. Oh man, what a what a shield round. Absolutely. If 35 had rotated just like 10 seconds quicker, mm -hmm. like uh, had his tab out ready to know when the uh, that fungi had gone down, he could have rotated and he could have denied that cat, but just the seconds of hesitation or not looking at the tablet or knowing when your teammate went down, that killed them there. They could have took this series here, but it's definitely not looking like that now. 
we'll see if Vikings can maintain their composure, you know, and stay stay focused as a squad. They can definitely, you know, take this round because they've been playing good. They've taken rounds consistently from boss fight. Yeah, they have. They need to try and take back that pace from boss fight again from that kind of, uh, you know, boss fight took the round before last. They took the last one with a cap. If Vikings can just, you know, slap themselves on the face and go, let's focus on this, let's get one round, they could still take this back. They can still have a chance of taking this map, as you said. Yeah, absolutely. Manus and Femi opting for that far east rotation. Scooby. Trying to take some shots out, but 35 catches out Uchiku. Uchi UK, rather. A nice headshot as well. That was only, I think, like a two burst directly on his head. There was no messing about from 35 there. I guess Uchi got uh, too aggressive peeking out in the southwest. Shots from Spoilty don't land and boss fight into a 4v5 to kick things off very early. And the members on the far east coming around as well. They're going to be a pretty big force, I think, coming in. But there is a boss fight kind of ready for that. I've got those two guys in the south. I'm liking this defense, really. Now, the West is pretty exposed, which could be bad. It's pretty ideal, I'd say, really, for a 4v5. Got that nice kill box going. Shots out really everywhere. Mad Scientist denying the south flank. Sort of stopping the Vikings from pushing forward anymore. He probably isn't aware that there's another one here, and he gets his back shot. Call out there, though. And the confirm hasn't come in. There is the confirm, so no res available. And Vikings go into a 4v3. And with Crosley kind of uh, crossed over to the southwest side now, he does stand a chance of being able to deny whether there's kind of rotation on the objective. Because he's been kind of uh, pretty risky walking about there, but unless he rotates inside the building, which he is currently in, if he keeps running around like that, he's going to end up getting killed by Crosley as he crosses over uh, to the kind of uh, line of sight. I'm only seeing two on my map for boss fight. There is definitely three alive, though. Two are on objective. A team kill for boss fight. Another one! A fifth one. This is not good at all. The miscommunication is real for this series. Boss fight into a 2v4 now. Scooby is aware that Femi's over on that south side. Risks crossing the street, doesn't get caught out. Has to get closer to objective though. Yeah. And his over aggression costs him his life as he gets picked from Krorzy way down that lane. And now boss fight. This is the round. This is exactly what Vikings needed. Yeah, now it's all up to UC Death and the Vikings. I think are feeling pretty confident with their positions and uh, their communication that they can take down this one remaining member of boss fight. And if UC Death keeps kind of getting antsy like this, checking every angle around the building, he's eventually going to miss someone or just get taken down because he can't check every angle inside the uh, every angle of each direction quite thoroughly. So this is not a good situation in any scenario, even <laughs> if it was a 1v2. Uh, Vikings have to take advantage here. They have to get their utility out. They should smoke objective. Try and work something. I'm not sure what it is, considering how UC Death's really circulating circulating around objective here. It'd be really hard to get a cap, but... Oh, the smokes are coming in. Are they going to try for a 3-3 three, three here? Get the cap and even up to Mac Oof. point. No, they're not. They're just gonna get that cap. It definitely could have been on their minds, but it would have been so hard, you know. Just yeah, it, it would have been very difficult. To get it a cap on that objective would have been real challenging. But you know, really a odd round, hard to track. Honestly, everyone pretty spread out. Looks like guys were, you know, both teams looking for interesting picks. Boss fight. I'm not sure, but just not playing that one tight. And Vikings able to get some picks and take the round. Yeah, and if they can just do that again for the next round on uh, on Volk, then do it again for the Master Round. They've got it.
that is a kind of a high task considering they only need to lose one round to lose this map but that's all they need just two more rounds keep doing the same thing they were doing during superbia 2 and uh, the previous two rounds and they're good they can do it i believe in vikings now i believe in vikings Hypothetically speaking here, let's say Boss Fight grab this Marsoc round on Kaya, or they take their next Volk round. What do you think that third map is going to be? Do you think Vikings are going to pick into Volk? Hmm. Well, well, we obviously have a Subway band. We have Quarantine 1 band. We have Suburbia taken out because, of course, it's already been played. So we have uh, Ambazar. So we have Downfall. Hmm. We have Tanker. Tanker. We have... Cargo. Cargo, yes. I think we may see Vikings pick side and pick, and uh, then Boss Fight will pick Cargo. I'm feeling either that or we'll just see Vikings pick Downfall. That's what I'm going to say is uh, going to be the two choices for the final map. Yeah, I like it. Well, I think there may be some strong planning going on on the side of yeah. Vikings here. They're uh, pretty much all unready, just planning something. They're slowly running up one by one now. So whatever it is, they're planning they're done with that and they're heading in. Soon, maybe. <laughs> they can't fade us out there. Utilizing that full two-minute timer. Man, just looking at the kind of the kill differences on uh, Vikings and boss fight here. Total of uh, uh, 10 kills on boss fight, but I think 17 kills on Vikings. I think that tells the kind of <laughs> story of this map, this map entirely. It seems accurate. We'll see how this map shakes out as we dive into round number five, because there was a cap. I always got to pay attention, you know, in school. That's important. Yeah, you got to. Oh, we could see an early clash here with Weather Balloon. Uchi UK dumping some rounds up the center. While the rest of the squad advances forward. Weather Balloon does get the shots onto the back of 35 as he tries to rotate out. And there's another there. He gets picked up by Mad Scientist. It's so interesting. Weather Balloon always has a, sh has a guy shooting over his shoulder. You know, he pushes forward, he gets a nice kill, and then someone tries to get that angle, but it costs them usually their life because they try and overexpose themselves. Yeah. I said Vikings just need to do the same thing as the previous round, but I didn't quite mean be quite so aggressive with their position to the point where I got picked off by a boss fight so early, and wow, the aggression again. They may lose another, but instead it's by oh. Matt Sainz that gets taken down. Manus is in and the Matt back. could be on the big flank, yeah. This could be big. Market, um, east side. I don't think Weather is aware. He maybe now realizes he lost his 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 rifleman over his shoulder. Man, is gonna try and toss a nade out over there, and he gets caught up in that two story. If he, oh, it could have been perfect on the weather. The flash though, and Weather definitely not expecting Manus to be tucked in here. And wow, what a fantastic shutdown there on that push. But as one goes down, another. Picked up and boss fight now into a 3v2. Sound of some kind of miscellaneous C4 going yeah. off on objective. Uh oh, and a Ooh. disconnect for Vikings. That's not what they needed. Manus. Now trying to rotate back towards objective. Incredibly lucky not to get caught out by UC Death. Does get those great shots, though. Now he's going to try and get back onto the objective and be the main defender I'm kind of feeling a 1v3 clutch here Nightfire but it's going to be so difficult with Hooji moving up I know he is usually successful pushing this objective from this angle he loves coming through that kind of center of the bazaar straight for objective nice and low to the ground so if if Mantis can do this this is going to be a, a hell of a final round we'd have He's got a lot on his plate here, and he's exposing himself constantly because he has to. He has to keep checking these angles. The smokes now, those are going to throw him off. He's now crashing on towards objective. Shots in. 
From Hoochie, he goes down by Manus. Now it's a 1v1. Scooby Doo, though, he's got the very good position, and Mantis is in such a big disadvantage just because he's got to run around on the objective. And Scooby saw him and he took him down. Boss fight, but the skin of their teeth taking that round. Incredibly fortunate to have a disconnect, and I guess bugs affecting both sides here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Definitely to a disadvantage, but either way, we're tied up in the series. What's, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what this third map, how this third map's gonna shake out. It could go either way. It really could go either way at this point. No one could, I think, call it's gonna go to a Pacific side. As long as there's no caps, I think it could go to Vikings. That's my kind of guesstimation. I crashed out there, but it looks like our third map could be downfall. Is that correct? Indeed, you are correct. And who is Volk? That's the real question. Interestingly, it is boss fight, so it was just um, mm. Vikings picking the map instead of picking the side. Copy that. The team should hopefully be alerted now, so they uh, should be holding on while we resolve these temporary tech issues with uh, the game. It happens from time to time. More often than not these days. <laughs> I am joining now. Wow, 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 wow. Boss fight and the Vikings bringing it down to the final map on Downfall. This is the map that, you know, we've really started to see shake up to be one that requires incredible team coordination and good team play. If it's not there, this map becomes really hard to win on. And Yeah, it does. Both teams have it today, that's for sure. As long as Vikings can keep playing coordinated like they have been, they're definitely going to get a boss fight to run for their money here. Yeah, keep that coordination up. Hope for some team kills on boss fight and Vikings can do it. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult for them. It's going to be very difficult for them. If uh, boss fight don't make the mistakes they were making on Suburbia 2, then I think their their boss fight could definitely cry and claw their way back desperately to take the series. It's been an unexpectedly good series. I think we could definitely agree yeah, on that. 100%. Unexpectedly, just back and well, not back and forth, but just surprising overall with some very solid players coming up from both sides at different stages in the game. Seems there is some kind of delay on the uh, teams here starting up. Oh, I think I might realize, all right. Everybody is here. Okay, no subs team either team, from rosters. Oh, yes. you didn't? <laughs> yeah, I this thing, yeah I, I did forget to tell them that we, uh, we're ready to go again. But they know now, and uh, hopefully all is good. well this is a barn burner of a series and i can't wait much longer for this downfall map to fire up yeah well, i'm not sure what objective it is to start off with i don't know about you but i cannot really uh actually see it um it's looking to me to be a east dumpster yes. i think Right where my can. Now check out. Yeah. 
And the timer. Oh, unfortunate spawn point. Uh, the timer is wrong, but everything else is correct this round. So just be aware. We started with a minute 20 left, so end of round will be at about. Well, I guess end of round would be at a minute 20, right? Um, That's how it would work. Yeah, the start of the round is yes. the start of the round time is the end of the round time. <laughs> yes, potentially. That's how it's working out in my head, I think. Yes. Man, this is this is the this. I've not seen a rollout like this from a team for this particular objective and spawn. They've left one guy that being spoilty with his uh, MK18 Hollow way up at the North Hotel. They've got three down going towards the west side and just one heading east. I've not really seen a team do a roller like this before. Normally you'd send two east, three west, but never leaving a guy up in that north hotel. I think they're going to use him for suppression when this push starts to come out. It's just a very... Uh, it's risky. It's not risky, but it could definitely backfire. If you lose your front line... Then you're stuck with a guy up in North Hotel as your last person to push forward, and time can become an issue. And although it's not an issue here because it's about to reset and we got another about five minutes left on the clock, it can be. Mm. Do not let that time run down, and you can do many things on downfall. If you start getting pressured by the time, it's pretty much round over, I think. Because if you get pressure by the time you do things like running out into the open because you've got no other choice, you've got to do less than optimal smokes and grenades, you can't check as many angles, it's just bad news all around. But it seems like that Vikings is moving at kind of a steady pace here. They're already sending their guys up to the West Road, and though they do still kind of have the uh, big bad stretch of the uh, West Road, it's at least going to kind of not stop Fungi from picking off Hoochie in the Far East. That's a really nice pick. For him to be grabbing there. Through the, he kind of utilized that shrub to camouflage himself and was just checking that hillside. Yeah, that's a great shot there. Really hard to ID Femi there peeking that. Man, Vikings are looking good. They're utilizing some great strats here. Team coordination on point. They're crossing that street pretty effectively. Weather balloon, who you usually think, uh, you know, opt to cover this long, this big gap here, is not. I think maybe Scientist is. Somebody has to be covering that crossing. Yeah, Scientist is. But he's missed two people cross that already. Looks like Scooby is going to go for the revival onto Hooch on the far southeast. But is Hooch going to pop up and then immediately get doned by Fungi? I'm kind of thinking that may be the case. I don't know how this is going to... This is a really interesting res. Oh, he is. His body's way down here for me, but he gets popped yeah. up to the top. The shots come out, and... Weather Balloon finds Femi on the back of shots, almost landing on Tahuchi getting rezzed. <laughs> like, I, think that, I think if Fungi had kind of uh, stayed in his... below the shrub location where he initially took down Hoochie, he could have potentially taken him down, taken down Weather Balloon, and maybe Scooby as well. Though I think taking him down as well would have been a little bit sketchy. It would have been a very hard shot to make, considering the, you know, massive information advantage that Scooby would have. Baldi has finally moved down from North Hotel, and he's now kind of hanging about this North Bungalow area. The rest of Vikings slowly snaking their way down the west there. Grozy might actually try and go for the uh, west dumpster building and have a little tango with UC Death and Scoob. UC Death has identified this push finally, sees him at the wall there. You're going to need some sort of utility. Nantis definitely not in a good spot. He gets caught out. Rosie does spot Scooby-Doo on his little rotation onto that corner piece of the wall. Rosie is definitely looking for Scooby. If Scooby peeks out again, he may go down, but the angles are just so small. I'd be amazed if they actually hit each other at all. I think 35 has that line of sight on Scooby. Corozzi needs to be looking for the shots through that really hard to see through camouflage. Well, Scooby's just resorted to blind fire right now. He knows he can't peek out before uh, before getting taken down. Maybe he needs to kind of pop a smoke here, just get out of there. This is a very dangerous location for Scooby to be in now. 
Gorzi is using the Chaos of Suppression to finally make his cross. You see Death doesn't have the line of sight on it. Scooby-Doo has spotted him out, and I wonder where that fire from 35 is. Yeah, it's kind of been missing. They are starting to slowly get that in, and also Sport is coming down from the far uh, north side. He picks off one, maybe looking for another, but no. Refrained by Hooch, and Crozy goes down as well. Vikings are down to one. This is not looking too hot. It is not, and Weather Balloon finally takes up that top top store. Uh, sorry, the angle up on that top of that hill catches out the last remaining member of Vikings and boss fight with a very nice defensive hold. Take the lead one nil. I think this is their comeback, Lightfire. I think this is it. The yeah. coordination on Vikings is just not quite as strong as it was on the uh, previous two maps, especially Suburbia 2. We'll see. You know, it's a lot about spawns on this in this uh, in this map. You know, where you where you get your spawn. If it's a fast spawn, because I think if they can get a quick spawn on a certain objective, you know, the opportunity is there for them to keep their coordination yeah, tight. But uh, you know, yeah, I'm in agreement with you there. That boss fight, the more veteran team, definitely uh, more accustomed to having to battle back. Um, I don't know, man. This is... It's up to Vikings, really, to see if they can get a Marsoc round. It's going to be a tall order. Or Sorry, no. Yeah, Vikings are going on the defensive. Now. Yes, Vikings will be on defense. The round yeah, colors have... Uh... <laughs> I've got a very interesting sight here just kind of flying around the game world. It's a uh, Mad Scientist and Hoochie clearly before the round ended were just about to high-five each other as the game models are frozen in place with their hands up right next to each other, staring at each other. It's quite romantic, really. It really is. We can't, be, can't be focused too much on it because you can still hear their comms and we don't want to hear it. But yeah, what a great sight. Yeah. What a great sight of friendship. You can observe it from a, different, a distance, merely. I managed to get right up in there because they weren't talking. But all is well as we hop into our... Second round on downfall. It is going to be a fast spawn, but not for the Vikings. That's not ideal. I think boss fight, they want to try and go fast right now. They want to take center hotel. Maybe we'll see their uh, kind of famous, world famous, maybe just me famous position oh. going straight for objective. That well, early pick's going to be big. I think they are going to go straight for it, Nightfire. An excellent early pick. It's an incredibly risky thing to be doing to try and go up to that uh, position because of, you know, the vulnerability to that early spawn. And Mad Scientist finds 35. And just a reminder, the colors are reversed. So Marsoc is red, Volk is blue. Boss fight are red, Vikings are blue. The timer also is 30, about 30 See seconds me? off, so if that happens, be aware of it. Either way, I don't know if it is going to happen since Vikings are just dropping like flies. Yeah, it's not looking too good. I can't believe Mad Scientist was allowed to get to the West Church. That is such a strong position to get up that quickly with Where's Scooby an, going um... down. That is going to help Vikings, but not with Mad Scientist approaching objective like this. He's... In this two-story, this is going to be real hard for Spolzy to deal with. He's not going to be ready for it. He can't cap here. He has to get far closer. I think he's going for it. Spolzy hears it. The back-end shots from Manus catch him out. And here comes another weather balloon charging in. Nade comes out inside. Catches Spolzy. c force detonated on Spoilty. That is the perfect play. I can't believe that worked out. Now it's all up to Mantis. Will he see Hoochie go up into this two-story on his left side? I don't think he catches him out of the corner of his FOV. He does finally spot the tail end and gets him just in the nick of time. And now with about four minutes and ten seconds left in the round, Vikings are into a 1v1. Such a strong push that just kind of got picked off. I don't know how that didn't really work out for boss fight. That was looking really strong until the last moment. That C4 play was clutch. That was clutch. If Weather Balloon had been allowed on objective, that would have been a cap. 3-0, going to the possibly final round. I wonder... 
kind of res options are available here? There is one available for Vikings, but I don't think he's going to kind of afford the time to rotate all the way to the South him. Valley there. You get him easily there. Maybe he's just going to be used for info instead because he has view on the entire west side street. So that's some pretty valuable info to get. That would obviously be preferable to have a two up. But I guess he just doesn't think it's worth risking moving away from being able to see the objective. The spot does look really risky, but it's really important to remember lines of sight and these little ridges that they're utilizing here. Manus is trying to stay tucked in around this around this super hard to notice ridge, but it's definitely denying lines of sight all over the place. And he's really only exposing himself to the corner, which he's staying diligent on, but then also can peek up whenever he needs to just a little bit to make sure objective is not getting capped on. Yeah. Oh, and UC Death moving up the west, but Krozi's timed out, he's dead. So he's not going to be able to call mm. out the info that UC's moving up far west. Maybe there was some kind of final death throw where Krozi saw him, called him out, and then died, but I don't think he managed to get it out just in time. He must have died just a few seconds before UC Death started the maneuver. But Mantis seems to know. Look at this, Mantis he's is using the there. dead body. It doesn't work. UC Death spots him out and... Oh, very unfortunate. Yeah. I think what was going on there was Mantis believed that Crozy was still up and could have called out if he was there, but oh, obviously sure. he bled out. That's very unfortunate. That's a very good observation. Boss fight taking advantage of it and taking the lead 2-0, evening out the scoreline 6-6 six six in the series so far. And if they can take this map, they take the series. It's been a barn burner, so, I mean, Vikings have definitely put up a fantastic fight, though. I... I anticipate them to be able to take at least one Volk round. Yeah, I'd say so as well. They get themselves on the board for this final map. And uh, I'm going to predict a final score night, but I'm feeling it. I think it's going to be a 7-8 uh, to eight for Vikings uh, game with a 7. That's why I'm thinking the hmm. score line's going to be here. Wow. Okay, I like it. And that's only something I think is going to really minimize the MMR losses for Vikings here. I think we're going to see like a, I don't think it's even going to go down the site really because they put up such an incredible fight for the difference in their MMR here. <laughs> I wonder if that's happened. The team has lost a round and then not lost MMR for it. Yeah. That'd be interesting. But we'll see but. what happens as we dive into round number three of map three. Time will be ending at a minute 20. Oh, these are good spawns. Yeah, they are. This is these the fast spawn spawns. for Vikings. This is the this is the kind of quick spawn that Vikings can definitely utilize effectively. They can keep their as tight long as true coming over the hill. Yeah, very true. Weather balloon here. The first they have to deal with, Spoil T misses the shots on the crossing, and now they know that Vikings are here. Weather Balloon takes advantage of that information right away and catches out Femi on the hill. A pretty good pick. He's gonna, um, is he gonna, yeah, he's gonna stay inside that white building, try and hold this location because the south is vital for this objective. Otherwise, people can smoke it out and just pepper the kind of a uh, back side of the objective when it's bad news all round. But this is looking good for boss fights so far. They've got that pick. They've got solid locations, solid positions for their defense. And as long as Vikings don't get some uh, solid picks onto like either Scooby or Weatherbloom, I think they can take this, make it 3-0, go to that final, well, possibly final round. A lot of fire into that center hotel there. There's a lot of pre-fire, though. Vikings not really having any identification of anybody in there. Vikings is very kind of spooked by the white building position now, and rightfully so. Mm. It is a scary one. I feel like it's so difficult to hit people in the windows there. They can duck back oh. so quickly. 35 almost caught the top portion of the head of Weather Balloon there, but... Good suppression on these windows. Yeah, they're really dialed in here. They do not want Weather to get any more kills. 
He's baiting out the shots with the tablet, trying to get him to waste all of their ammo. But that is allowing just Sporty to move up. He's wasting a lot of time. Yeah, that's kind of part of their plan. And Loyalty's push could force Weather Balloon out. A nice nade. Wow, what an excellent nade. What a play in general. Baiting out the shots to know he was down there. Throwing the nade down here, popping up and finishing him off. That is... That's what you get for being a number three team in the world. That kind of play. Weather Balloon definitely the MVP of the series for Boss Fight. Finally getting picked off by 35, though, and that's going to be a really crucial pick because now it opens up this south lane for them. Mm. And Cruzy up by the north bungalow is trying to, uh, trying to find some kind of angle. Not sure exactly what he's looking for. But he needs to be careful of Scooby. Scooby is the big danger here because he's got the angle and the cover to cover the south side. And that's a pretty important one to uh, open up for the team. Because no one appears to be rotating far north on coming around the west side. It's just Crosley coming through center and the rest coming through the south. A lot of suppression coming out of boss fight here. And they're doing it because Hoochie's rotating. As you called out earlier, he's trying to go out to get that res. He is going to be able to do it, I think. Yeah, he's not going to go for Manus, and Manus is going to be completely exposed. It's going to be bad news for him. He gets caught out by Mad Scientist before Uchi can get the kill, and Weather Balloon gets picked up, and Boss Fighter into a 4v2. It was a trade between Mad Scientist and uh, uh, Mantis, though. That's a, that's a pretty good one. It's still two in the south, I think. 35 needs to get out of the south side, get out of the twins, and try and group up the cruelty. I think that's their best shot of being able to get through here. Trying to catch out that rooftop defender there. I think that's Scooby over there. Yeah. You know, I would love to see a Hail Mary nade straight on top of the roof to take down Scooby. That's kind of the holy grail, I think. Scooby-Doo catches out Karorzy. And it just seems like these guys are peeking at the perfect time. Scooby, they're allowed, allowed to peek. He'd been getting suppressed the entire game. The one time he's not, he gets a kill. Yeah. I feel like the roles have kind of swapped over here. Vikings have loosened up. Uh, boss fight have loosened up. And Vikings have kind of uh, tightened up. Yeah. And uh, not in a good way. And it seems that they're even so comfortable as Weather Balloon's going to be pushing up to take down 35. He's been pretty risky with this, but I imagine it is going to pay off, yeah. Who she takes down 35, so Weather Balloon not really needs to push up in the end, but boss fight. 3-0, this is definitely their map. Yep. I think this is going to go to very narrowly boss fight. I am in agreement. It's going to be hard to take a Marsoc round again, but they're looking good. They're playing well. They have mustered a fantastic comeback here. It was not, I mean, a terrible start for them, honestly, on Suburbia. 4-0 going to Vikings. And then even five points unanswered leading into Bazaar, but... Man. Strong plays. Yeah. Very strong plays. Vikings got to be feeling good, though. They have, they're putting up such a good fight against this team. Their confidence, I mean, their commitment to, to practice, it has to just be skyrocketing right now. Yeah, it absolutely has. Because even, when the, as I said, uh, I think before the first round even started, is if, Vi uh, if Vikings, if Vikings can uh, just do anything for this final map, they're still going to be feeling good ending even if they lose it. Because, you know, they took a map 4-0 off boss fight. The second map was very, very close. Right? They're happy. I think it's kind of they're, they're doing the dangler sentiment. Yeah, they're just happy, even though they're gonna, most likely going to lose this particular round and this the series because they've still performed incredibly well and uh, they're going to be a big threat for boss fight in the future. I think if uh, they can't kind of resolve the issues they had during that first map. There you go. This is the same objective that West dumps the one. When was the start of the round time? About 40? Uh, 43 seconds, probably. 43, I think that's safe. 
Uh, colors are also incorrect. Uh, well, I guess they are correct. It's just Volker blue and Marsucker red. So just keep an eye on that mentally. Yep. Make sure you don't get confused. <laughs> This is kind of an interestingly east-focused offense from boss fight here. They've still got two guys up in the spawn building. Are they long range? Or are they just kind of uh, being recon here? I think they just recon. Yeah, they're way back there. Maybe waiting to see if Vikings are throwing out any over-aggression on their far east side. That would make sense. It feels like some, that's something Vikings would do in this kind of situation. They are doing one thing that's kind of aggressive as Cruzy's position. On the west, uh, in the west street, by the wall, by the car, looking out towards the uh, north helicopter building. That's not a position I've seen play before, but it, it's very risky. He's got a very large backpack on, and that's kind of peeking over the wall a little bit. And he has been spotted because of that backpack. Yep. Mad scientist dialing in, up, dialing in on him up there from that two-story window. Man is catching out Weather Balloon. That's a huge pick, tag, tagging down Weather uh, for boss fight. <clears throat> Very nicely done. He did that from uh, that, that far back hillside as Weather was trying yeah. to rotate. Probably he's being spotted by two members at once. This is, I think, most likely his demise right here. Yeah, scientists pushing it now. Scooby. Whoa, I didn't even see Scooby rotate around to the backside on that two story. He catches out, Karorzi. And it's like the guys in the kind of far east have kind of decided that it's not too fantastic of an idea to continue pushing east. One of them's rotated from the red truck down to the north bungalow. The other's kind of backed off from the northeast over towards the spawn a little bit more. Trying to keep that long range angle. It's such a hard. If they have control of the hilltop, it's very hard to push uh, along that east side. You just look at your over overhead map, and you can kind of see that he's got really just a good cone of coverage there from that hill. Yeah. It's a very, very big kind of line of sight. I'm surprised they haven't actually rotated him up to watch between those buildings into the darkroom yet. Because that's a very strong position to have, though. Obviously, you need to be very, very aware of your uh, teammates' statuses. If one goes down, uh, like, at Center Hotel, you pretty much have to rotate in at that point, which uh, he does appear to be doing kind of preemptively, which I think is a good shout. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If he was into this dark building, he could wreak havoc on this boss fight push, but hasn't rotated. And he's going to allow Scooby and Mad to kind of make some, make some moves here. Fungi has the angle here. Let's take a look at uh, Fungi's kind of oh, yeah. cam here. It's such a small angle. He's shooting between the netting of the camo, where he just has a tiny line of sight. Just barely see, maybe like a, a few atoms of Scooby Doo. We're fumbling from Scooby. I'm not sure if that was a. Um, I think that was a mag, maybe some smokes. He's throwing smokes now. So they're going to try and push up to this kind of center hotel area, maybe slightly further up the street where Karuzi died. That would make sense. And yeah, it appears that finally Mantis is starting to move up. And he's going to be looking for UC Death. I think he's going to find him very shortly. Somebody down East Church. Boss fight losing another on that East side. Now oh, Hoochie trying to make his way up the middle. This could be Vikings round, finally. They could put themselves on the board on downfall. Mm, they could. That would, be, that would be my prediction. It always rings true. I'm right 100% of the time, 20% <laughs> of the time. Bimmy finally catching out Scooby on that tight angle we were looking at earlier, and Hoochie's really... I mean, jeez, dude. Oh, I'm getting flashbacks to beginners. No, they can't allow this. 
That's what he's going for. I think the objective wrong on our on my screen at least. It's showing it's the old objective. I think it's here on the corner, right? Yeah, I think it is. And there's no way 35 is going to see it. There's no way Fun Guy is going to see it unless he peeks out the window. Well, there's about 30 seconds left. I think the timer started at 40. So about a minute left actually on the clock right now. Yeah, this is it. It's a 5-0. I'm calling it now. Oh like, my this is gosh. 5-0 with the hoochie cap. The flashback to the beginners match. I can't believe He's... 35 isn't oh. going to see this. Unbelievable. Nobody's going to see this. Spoilty isn't going to check on objective through the window. It's all he needs to do. Oh no, Matt Scientist getting that kill could scare Vikings into rotating to objective. It's not. They're going to get it. Boss fight. Late. Go up 5-0 and take the series. What a callback to the beginner's match with Hoochie again in the same kind of cap. Vikings, that tiny home, their defense, such a disaster in the end. Wow. <laughs> Holy cow, what a fantastic series to tune in to tune into. Excellent play from both teams. Vikings kicking it off, dominating against a team that they should not be dominating against. And then boss fight answering back and proving that they are definitely deserving of their, their current rank. But you gotta, they got to watch out for Vikings. Yeah, Vikings are going to be an issue for them going forward, as I said. Next season, maybe we'll see them as a uh, high-tier high team, maybe. That would not really surprise me at this point. After seeing their performance in this series. What an excellent improvement from last season. I mean, their their score lines against Boss Fight 12 to 1, 12 to 3, and now here, 6 to 9. Yeah, just a really just really well done and gosh, it's uh I'm looking forward to the rest of this weekend because there are a lot of matchups this weekend. Yeah, there are many matchups indeed, and uh how many casts we have tomorrow? Taking a look at the uh, it's schedule like here. Seven. We've got <laughs> boss fight danglers. Uh, Phantom Stone Cold Killers, Phoenix SMC, and we're a team Allen House. That's four casts tomorrow. Wow. Wow. Not messing about with these matches. Actually, no, technically five casts because Sleepy is also signed on for Blaze versus Lemon Squad. Shit. It's going to be stacked tomorrow. Absolutely stacked. What an excellent weekend for Onward. If you guys want to tune in to more, Head on over to vrmasterleague.com slash honor, where you can follow our Twitter, Facebook, both channels. I think there's another game going on, Master League 2 right now, Coletto's vs. Dead Logic. Uh, definitely a lower tier <laughs> a lower tier uh, matchup in comparison to this one, but uh, one that could be interesting if you want to go over and uh, check it out. Um, but man, the, the, the Onward Master League is in peak shape right now, and I do recommend... You head on over there. If you want to get involved in the league, now is the time. Plenty of new teams sprouting up, new players joining constantly, people joining into the reservists where you can be a substitute for a team that needs someone extra. Uh, a lot of teams practicing, plenty of scrimmages to get involved in. There's all sorts of opportunity uh, for, for play in the league. So please uh, head on over to the site and get involved. And I think that's going to be it from us today here on Master League One. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Nightfire with two E's, my co-caster Buxton. We will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.